The Titan IV family including the EVA and IVB of rockets were used by the U.S. Air Force. They were launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida, and Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. At the time of its introduction, the Titan IV was the largest unmanned space booster used by the Air Force. As originally conceived in the mid-1980s, the Titan IV was only intended to complement the Space Shuttle and fly a mere 10 times. However, the Challenger disaster in 1986 caused a renewed dependence on expendable launch systems so that the program was significantly expanded. Under the original plan, the Titan IV would only be paired with Centaur stages and fly exclusively from LC-41 at Cape Canaveral. The post-Challenger program also involved flying IUS inertial upper stage or even no upper stages. LC-40 at the Cape was also converted for Titan IV, even with the reduced schedule. Almost 40 Titan IVs were scheduled as of 1991 and a new, improved SRM solid rocket motor casing using lightweight composite materials was introduced. The Titan IV was the last of the Titan family of rockets. It was retired in 2005 due to its high cost of operation. The final launch B30 from Cape Canaveral AFS occurred on April 29, 2005, and the final launch from Vandenberg AFB occurred on October 19, 2005. Lockheed Martin Space Systems built the Titan IVs near Denver, Colorado, under contract to the government. The Titan IV is currently on display at Evergreen Air and Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon. Topic. Features The Titan IV was developed to provide assured capability to launch Space Shuttle class payloads for the Air Force. The Titan IV could be launched with no upper stage, or either of two upper stages, the IUS inertial upper stage, and the Centaur rocket upper stage. The Titan IV was made up of two large solid fuel rocket boosters and a two-stage liquid-fueled core. The two storable liquid fuel core stages used aerosine 50 fuel and nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. These propellants are hypergolic ignite on contact and are liquids at room temperature, so no tank insulation is needed. This allows the launcher to be stored in a ready state for extended periods. Both propellants are extremely toxic. The Titan IV could be launched from either coast, SLC-40 or 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station near Cocoa Beach, Florida and at SLC-4E, at Vandenberg Air Force Base launch sites 55 miles northwest of Santa Barbara, California. Choice of launch site depended on mission parameters and mission goals. Topic. Variants and type identification The IVA 40 nano amperes used boosters with steel casings, the IVB 40 NB used boosters with composite casings, the SRMU. Type 401 used Centaur third stage, type 402 used IUS third stage. Other types without third stages were 403, 404 and 405. Type 403 was no upper stage, for lower mass payloads to higher orbits from Vandenberg. Type 404 was no upper stage, for heavier payloads to low orbits, from Vandenberg. Type 405 was no upper stage, for lower mass payloads to higher orbit from Cape Canaveral. Topic. Background. The Titan rocket family was established in October 1955 when the Air Force awarded the Glenn L. Martin Company later Martin Marietta, now part of Lockheed Martin a contract to build an intercontinental ballistic missile SM-68. It became known as the Titan I, the nation's first two-stage ICBM, and complemented the Atlas ICBM as the second underground, vertically stored, silo-based ICBM. Both stages of the Titan I used liquid oxygen and RP-1 as propellants. A subsequent version of the Titan family, the Titan II, was similar to the Titan I, but was much more powerful. 
Designated as LGM-25C, the Titan II was the largest missile developed for the USAF at that time. The Titan II had newly developed engines which used aerosene 50 and nitrogen tetroxide as fuel and oxidizer in a self-igniting, hypergolic propellant combination, therefore allowing the Titan II to be stored underground ready to launch. Titan III development began in 1964 with the Titan IIIA. <laughs> Titan IV. Years later, the Titan IVB evolved from the Titan III family and is similar to the Titan 34D. While the launcher family had an extremely good reliability record in its first two decades, this began to change in the 1980s with the loss of a Titan 34D in 1985 followed by the disastrous explosion of another in 1986 due to a SRM failure. The Titan IVB vehicle was intended to use the new composite casing SRMs manufactured by Alliant Technologies rather than the old steel casing SRMs produced by Chemical Systems Division Titan IVA would use the CSD motors. However, there were numerous development problems with them and so Lockheed Martin put out a request to CSD to supply a few more of the old style SRMs. Topic: 1993 booster explosion. On August 2, 1993, Titan IVK 11 lifted from SLC-4E carrying a NOS SIGNIT satellite. Unusual for DOD launches, the Air Force invited the civilian press to cover the launch, and it became more of a story than intended when the booster exploded 101 seconds after liftoff. Investigation found that another SRM burn through had occurred, albeit much higher up and later in the flight than 34D9. This incident was found to have been caused by an improper repair job on one of the SRMS. After Titan 34D9, extensive measures had been put in place to ensure proper SRM operating condition, which included X raying the motor segments during pre launch checks. The SRMs that went on to K-11 had originally been shipped to Cape Canaveral where X-rays revealed anomalies in the solid propellant mixture in one segment. Repair work was done on it, but further X-rays were still enough for CC personnel to disqualify them from flight. The SRMs were then shipped to Vandenberg and approved. The repair work on the SRMs had involved workers making a pie-shaped cut in the propellant block to remove the defective area. However, most of CSD's qualified personnel had left the program by this point and so the repair crew in question did not know the proper procedure. After replacement, they neglected to seal the area where the cut in the propellant block had been made. The result was a near repeat of 34D9, a gap was left between the propellant and SRM casing so that another burn through occurred during launch. Topic. Cassini-Huygens launch In October 1997, a Titan IVB rocket launched Cassini-Huygens, a pair of probes sent to Saturn. It was the only use of a Titan IV for a non-Department of Defense launch. Huygens landed on Titan on January 14, 2005. Cassini remained in orbit around Saturn. The Cassini mission ended on September 15, 2017 as it was maneuvered into Saturn's atmosphere to burn up. <laughs> 1998 failure, and two in 1999 1998 saw the worst accident when a launch of a Navy ELINT Mercury satellite from Cape Canaveral failed around 40 seconds into the flight. An electrical failure caused the Titan to suddenly pitch downward, the resulting aerodynamic stress causing one of the SRMs to separate. The ISDS inadvertent separation destruct system automatically triggered, rupturing the SRM and taking the rest of the launch vehicle with it. 
At T plus 45 seconds, the range safety officer sent the destruct command to ensure any remaining large pieces of the booster were broken up. Investigation showed that Titan K 17, which was several years old and the last Titan IVA to be launched, had dozens of damaged or chafed wires and should never have been launched in that operating condition. However, the Air Force put extreme pressure on launch crews to meet program deadlines. The ultimate cause of the failure was an electrical short that caused a momentary power dropout to the guidance computer at T plus 39 seconds. After power was restored, the computer sent a spurious pitch down and yaw to the right command. At T plus 40 seconds, the Titan was traveling at near supersonic speed and could not handle this action without suffering a structural failure. In any case, the Titan's fuselage was filled with numerous sharp metal protrusions that made it nearly impossible to install, adjust, or remove wiring without it getting damaged. Quality control at Lockheed's Denver plant, where Titan vehicles were assembled, was described as awful. An extensive recovery effort was launched, both to diagnose the cause of the accident and recover debris from the classified satellite. All of the debris from the Titan had impacted offshore, between 3 and 5 miles downrange, and at least 30% of the booster was recovered from the seafloor. Debris continued to wash ashore for days afterward, and the salvage operation continued until October 15. The Air Force had pushed for a launch on demand program for DOD payloads, something that was almost impossible to pull off especially given the lengthy preparation and processing time needed for a Titan IV launch at least 60 days. General Chuck Horner, shortly before retiring in 1994, had referred to the Titan program as a nightmare. The 1998-99 schedule had called for four launches in less than 12 months. The first of these was Titan K-25 on May 9, 1998 which successfully orbited an Orion SIGNIT satellite. The second was K-17, and the third, delayed thanks to the investigation around K-17's failure, was K-32 on April 9, 1999 which carried a DSP early warning satellite. The IUS second stage failed to separate, leaving the payload in a useless orbit. Investigation into this failure found that wiring harnesses in the IUS had been wrapped too tightly with electrical tape so that a plug failed to disconnect properly and prevented the two IUS stages from separating. The fourth launch was K-26 on April 30, which carried a Milstar communications satellite. During the Centaur's flight, an uncontrolled roll motion developed, causing the upper stage and payload rotate at ever-increasing rate. This threw the stage off course so when it came time for restart, the Centaur cartwheeled out of control and left its payload in a useless orbit. This failure was found to be the result of an incorrectly programmed equation in the guidance computer. The error caused the roll rate gyro data to be ignored by the flight computer, resulting in open loop firing of the roll control thrusters until the RCS fuel was depleted. Topic. Solid rocket motor upgrade test stand In 1988–89, the R. M. Parsons Company designed and built a full-scale steel tower and deflector facility, which was used to test the Titan IV Solid Rocket Motor Upgrade The launch and the effect of the SRMU thrust force on the Space Shuttle vehicle were modeled. To evaluate the magnitude of the thrust force, the SRMU was connected to the steel tower through load measurement systems and launched in place. It was the first full-scale test conducted to simulate the effects of the SRMU on the main space shuttle vehicle. <laughs> Aluminum lithium tanks In the early 1980s, General Dynamics conceived of using a space shuttle to lift a lunar module into orbit and then launch a Titan IV rocket with an Apollo-type service module to rendezvous and dock—making a moonship for a lunar landing. The plan required the space shuttle and Titan IV to use aluminium-lithium alloy fuel tanks instead of aluminum to make a greater payload weight for takeoff. 
The original plan never came to fruition, but in the 1990s the shuttle was converted to aluminum-lithium tanks to rendezvous with the highly inclined orbit of the Russian Mir space station. Retirement The Titan family had become extremely expensive to fly by the 1990s and there were also growing safety concerns over its toxic propellants. The Atlas V rocket and the Delta IV and its heavy rocket booster variant launch vehicles were designed to replace the Titan IVs. The next generation ELVs such as Delta IV would use only solid motors and cryogenic propellants, as well they would be completely new, modern designs not derived from a 1960s missile system. <laughs> <laughs> Surviving examples In 2014, the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, began a project to restore a Titan IVB rocket. This effort was successful, and on June 8, 2016 its display was opened. The only other surviving Titan IV core is on outdoor display at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum, to include the stages and parts of the solid rocket motor assembly. Topic. General characteristics Primary function, space booster Builder, Lockheed Martin Astronautics Power plant Stage 0 consisted of two solid rocket motors. Stage 1 used an LR-87AJ-11 liquid propellant rocket engine. Stage 2 used the LR-91AJ-11 liquid propellant engine. Optional upper stages included the Centaur and inertial upper stage. Guidance system, a ring laser gyro guidance system manufactured by Honeywell. Thrust Stage 0, solid rocket motors provide 1.7 million pounds force 7.56 meganewtons per motor at liftoff. Stage 1, LR-87AJ-11 provides an average of 548,000 pounds force 2.44 meganewtons. Stage 2, LR-91AJ-11 provides an average of 105,000 pounds force 467 kilonewtons. Optional Centaur RL10A33A upper stage provides 33,100 pounds force 147 kilonewtons and the inertial upper stage provides up to 41,500 pounds force 185 kilonewtons. Length up to 204 feet 62 meters. Lift capability can carry up to 47,800 pounds (21,700 kilograms) into a low Earth orbit. Up to 12,700 pounds (5,800 kilograms) into a geosynchronous orbit when launched from Cape Canaveral AFS (FLA). And up to 38,800 pounds (17,600 kilograms) into a low Earth polar orbit when launched from Vandenberg AFB into geosynchronous orbit. With Centaur upper stage 12,700 pounds, 5,800 kilograms. With inertial upper stage 5,250 pounds, 2,380 kilograms. Payload fairing, manufacturer McDonnell Douglas Space Systems Co. Diameter 16.7 feet, 5.1 meters. Length 56, 66, 76, or 86 feet. Mass, 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, or 14,000 pounds Design, three sections, isogrid structure, aluminum Maximum takeoff weight, approximately 2.2 million pounds 1 million kilograms Cost, approximately $250 minus $350 million, depending on launch configuration Date deployed, June 1989 Launch sites, Cape Canaveral AFS, FLA, and Vandenberg AFB, Calif. Topic: Program cost 
In 1990, the Titan IV Selected Acquisition Report estimated the total cost for the acquisition of 65 Titan IV vehicles over a period of 16 years to $18.3 billion inflation adjusted $35.1 billion in 2019. Topic. Launch history Topic See also Comparison of heavy lift launch systems List of Titan launches, Titan I, II, III and IV